This video exercise will demonstrate how to model an antibody by homology modeling using a database of antibody structures to locate homologs and then humanize the antibody. We'll use the known antibody structure 1FSK but removed from the antibody database so that it can be treated as an unknown antibody. That way, the model we generate can be compared with the known crystal structure. So to begin, let's choose Tasks, Antibody Modeling, Prediction. Notice that on the left side is a label diagram of an antibody, and on the right, there are three tabs for setting up and performing the actual modeling. Let's click the heavy variable region on the diagram and choose from PDB ID. Then type 1FSK and click OK. The protein is imported and analyzed. Now, the PDB structure is a dimer, and after the analysis, the choose heavy region dialog opens, prompting us to choose the chain to use. We'll choose chain C and click OK. Now notice that the heavy variable region is colored green to indicate that it has been assigned. Next, click the light variable region on the diagram and choose from selected entries in the project table. This is because the PDB sequence and structure has already been imported and loaded to the project table in the previous step, so we can use it for the light chain. Now here the protein is analyzed for light chains and after the analysis, the choose light kappa region dialog box opens, prompting us to choose the chain to use. We'll choose chain B and click OK. Notice the light variable region is colored blue to indicate that it has been assigned and the text prompting us to import the regions has been removed. OK, the next step is usually to select the database to use in the search for homologs for the framework region. Now in this tutorial, the default database from the installation will be used, so no action is needed to select the database. However, the antibody we imported, 1FSK, must be removed from the database search because in this tutorial, we want to simulate the modeling of an unknown antibody. So let's click Filter Search Results. This setting allows us to restrict the search by filtering the database on the values of one or more properties. In our case, we'll use PDBID. So, in the property text box, type in PDBID. Then, from the option menu, choose Not Equals 1FSK. Then click Add. Note that the number of matches to the filter is now 1,199. This is good because the full antibody database contains 1,200 structures. Now click OK. Next, we can proceed with the search for a template for the framework region. So click Search. When the search is complete, the highest scoring result is 1i3g. This is selected by default and will be used for this exercise. So let's click Accept. So now the template for 1i3g is imported into the project and after a short analysis, the basic loop model tab is displayed. In this tab, you can choose whether to model the loops using the antibody database or using the input coordinates for the loops. If you model the loops, you can select the cluster of loop conformers you want to use for each loop that you model by clicking select cluster and choosing a cluster in the loop clusters panel. Then by default, the largest cluster of loops of the appropriate length is chosen automatically and the loop from this cluster that is most similar to the query is used. Here in this exercise, we'll just use the defaults, which includes generating a single model. So let's just click Generate Loop Models. After a few minutes, the models are generated and the model to view is populated. So let's click View in Workspace. Now notice the color legend in the bottom left which shows which colors correspond to the conserved residues in blue, sidechain mutated residues in cyan, predicted residues in red, and the antibody CDR loops in maroon. Now this model can be used as it is, but in real situations you might want a more accurate prediction of the H3 loop, which you can set up and run in the advanced loop model tab. But for now, we'll just check the accuracy of the homology model, which means we'll want to compare it with the X-ray structure. To do this, however, the X-ray structure needs to be pruned down to the size of the modeled structure just to make comparison a little easier. So let's head back to the toggle table and then we'll click A, remove everything from workspace. Then we'll click include in workspace and click 1FSK. Now notice that the PDB structure for 1FSK is much larger, containing many chains which would make comparison difficult. So now let's go to edit, delete, Select. Then we'll choose the Chain tab, and then select B and C, and then click Subtract. This way we select all chains except B and C. Then click OK. 
Now we have an almost pruned version of 1FSK with just chains B and C ready for comparison with our antibody model. So let's head back to the toggle table and click include in workspace and then bring back our antibody model, which is this one. And now both structures are in the workspace. Now let's open up the sequence viewer to first compare the sequences. Just go to edit, settings, show sequence viewer. Now chain L in our model has the same sequence as chain B in the X-ray structure right up until this point. Then chain B has more residues. So let's delete these residues just by selecting the next residue in chain B, shift click the last residue, and then clicking the delete button on the keyboard. Next, we'll do the same pruning for chain C. Just click the next residue in chain C, shift click the last, and then press delete. Okay, now the X-ray structure has been fully pruned down to the size of our model. Now to see how much the two structures differ, let's make a few changes to the representation and then run a structural alignment. So let's go back to the toggle table and choose C for color, auto, all atoms by object. Then we can show as cartoon. Next, we'll go to tools, protein structure alignment. We'll use the default settings and click align. Okay, when the proteins are aligned, notice that the alignment score and the RMSD are reported in a separate panel, protein structure alignment results. Finally, notice that both indicate that the alignment is very good. Okay, in part two of this tutorial, we will continue using our model and focus on the steps for humanizing the antibody.